worship for Sunday, March the 27th, 2022, the fourth Sunday in Lent, year C. Happy are those for whom God has rolled away the disgrace of former times. Happy is the Father at the return of his prodigal son. Happy are we that Christ Jesus has reconciled us to God. Rejoice. The Lord be with you. As we gather to worship in various times and places, may we be blessed by God who forms us in word, sacrament, and community. Today's worship is being live-streamed and saved to YouTube. For those who don't know me, I'm Pastor Stephen Weber, and I come from St. Paul's Lutheran Church here in Cambridge, Ontario. We're glad to have you join us. It's with sadness that we recognize the death of Audrey Boniface, mother of Shirley Mitchell Grumet. Audrey's funeral was yesterday. May God comfort with the sure and certain hope of resurrection, all who mourn. As the reality of COVID changes, so does our COVID policy for worship. It's no longer necessary to sign in on Sunday mornings. We welcome everyone who is masked and symptom-free to join us for in-person worship. Our choir begins meeting after worship for the next two weeks. Uh, all are welcome as they prepare for Easter Sunday, and I know Katrina would love to have you join them. In the narthex at the back, there are envelopes to donate Easter flowers in memory of a loved one or in honor of someone special to you. Simply fill in the information on the envelope and place it into the offering plate. We continue now with the confession and forgiveness. Please rise as you're able. In the name of God who makes a way in the wilderness, walks with us, and guides us in our pilgrimage. Amen. Holy One, we confess that we have wandered far from you. We have not trusted your promises. We have ignored your prophets in our own day. We have squandered our inheritance of grace. We have failed to recognize you in our midst. Have mercy on us. Forgive us and turn us again to you. Teach us to follow in your ways. Assure us again of your love and help us to love our neighbor. Amen. Beloved in Christ, the word draws near to you. In Jesus, God comes to you again and again and gathers you under the wings of love. In Jesus' name, your sins are forgiven. God journeys with you and teaches you how to live in love. Amen. Our gathering song is God Love the World. It's number 323 in Evangelical Lutheran Worship and will be on the screen.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. God of compassion, you welcome the wayward and you embrace us all with your mercy. By our baptism, clothe us with garments of your grace and feed us at the table of your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. The children's time, lost. I'm so very glad that you're here today, and I know that you're bringing sunshine and joy wherever you are. Have you ever seen a sign like the one that's on the screen, Lost Dog? Our little dog, Rascal, has been missing since March the 1st. We love Rascal very much, and we want him back. If you find Rascal, please call us. There's a $25 reward. Signs like that are kind of sad, because we know that it means a family is watching and waiting and hoping that their dog will return home. Every time the phone rings or every time there's a knock at the door, they're hoping it will be someone who found their lost dog. Until the dog is returned safely, they're worried. Have you ever lost something precious to you? Maybe a pet, jewelry, a toy? Did you ever find it? I bet you felt pretty good if it was found, but pretty sad if it was not found. In the story about Jesus that I'll read in just a few minutes, Jesus tells a story about a man who lost something that was very precious to him. The story is also about the man's great joy when the lost is found. Jesus told this story to tell us the kind of love that our God has for us. Now I invite you to move into your favorite prayer posture. It may be hands open, facing up to receive the gift of God's presence in prayer. It may be hands folded, heads bowed to help you, and eyes closed to help you concentrate. Or it may be crossing your arms across your chest to form an X, the first letter of Christ in Greek, and it feels like a hug from God. Let us pray. Dear Father God, thank you for your never-ending love that doesn't stop, even when we run away from you. Help us to show such great love to others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. At the back of the church, in an email to many of your parents, and available online at our website, stpaulscambridge.org, our children's bulletins for you that you're welcome to work on at any time, even while you're listening to the sermon. The Israelites pivot from wandering in the wilderness. Having been rescued by God from slavery in Egypt and having wandered in the wilderness for 40 years, The people have finally arrived in the promised land. The Israelites mark their arrival by celebrating the Passover, their first as freed people. A reading from Joshua. The Lord said to Joshua, Today I have rolled away from you the disgrace of Egypt, and so that place is called Gilgal to this day. While the Israelites were camped in Gilgal, They kept the Passover in the evening on the 14th day of the month in the plains of Jericho. On the day after the Passover, on that very day, they ate the produce of the land, unleavened cakes and parched grain. The manna ceased on the day they ate the produce of the land, and the Israelites no longer had manna. They ate the crops of the land of Canaan that year. The word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Joshua was Moses' successor and is portrayed as a new Moses. When God's people arrived at the threshold of the promised land, God parted the Jordan River so that the Israelites could cross that river on dry ground, just as God had done with Moses at the beginning of their journey to the promised land at the Red Sea. Now at the end of that journey, Joshua had the people gather together to celebrate Passover, just as they had done with Moses on the night of their escape from Egypt. 
Passover was a celebration of their release from slavery in Egypt. The original Passover commemorated God's care as the Israelites began their long journey to freedom. At the first Passover in the land, celebrated God's care of the Israelites during their 40-year-long escape. When wandering in the wilderness, the people had been sustained by daily manna from heaven. Now that the people have arrived in the promised land, that miraculous gift ceases. God will continue to provide for the Israelites, but in a different way. Here's a good reminder that God provides for us, too, in many and various ways. I see another parallel in this story with our being at a pivot point today, just as the Israelites were so many years ago. Hopefully, we're arriving at the end of the two-plus years of wandering in the wilderness of COVID-19. We're not there yet, and the new subvariant of Omicron threatens by being even more transmissible. But this past week, the rule regarding mask wearing in public has been removed. There is hope. The end of our exile is in sight. And we can be assured that God will continue to care for us. Thanks be to God. Amen. The mystery and ministry of reconciliation. One way to describe the gospel is the promise that in Christ everything is transformed into newness. All mistakes, all deliberate sins, all old history is reconciled with Christ's resurrection. This is Paul's strong message to the congregation in the city of Corinth. A reading from St. Paul's second letter to the, church, to the church in Corinth. From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view. Even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view, we know him no longer in this way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. All this is from God, who reconciled us through Christ to God, and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ God was reconciling the world to God's own self not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting the message of reconciliation to us. So we are the ambassadors of Christ, for Christ, since God is appealing through us. We entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, God made Christ to be sin who knew no sin, so that in Christ we might become the righteousness of God. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. In Christ, God was reconciling the world to God's own self, not counting their trespasses against them and entrusting the message of salvation to us. Professor Rolf Jacobson, who teaches Old Testament at Luther Seminary in Minneapolis, says that along with John 3.16, that's the best summary verse about what the gospel is. And then both his co-workers commented about how this verse talks about our being co-workers with God. Matt Skinner, who teaches New Testament, said, it's not just that we benefit from the righteousness of God, but this gets into that Pauline notion of participation. And Caroline Lewis, who teaches preaching, said, this verse orients your life and your world toward this constant sense of where is reconciliation needed and how do I participate in that? And how do I make reconciliation happen? This is what God calls us to do and to be, she says. The Reverend Dr. Daniel Glaze is a Baptist minister in North Carolina. And he focuses on the preceding verse, which is all this is from God, who reconciled us through Christ to God and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Our being reconciled with God is a gift from God. It's not our own doing. It's not anything that we earned. It's not because we repented and turned from our sinful ways. It's all because of the goodness of God. And God in turn, continues Dr. Glaze, and God in turn has given us the ministry of reconciliation. We are to be co-creators with God. 
This new way of relationship is a joint venture. God reconciled us to God's self, and so we in turn share reconciliation with others. Co-workers, participants, co-creators. These are all ways that various doctors of the church have pointed to our being God's ministers, working with God to bring reconciliation. All this is from God who has given us the ministry of reconciliation. We're called to live out who we are, people of God, people reconciled to God and to one another. May it be so among us. Amen. The parable of the prodigal father and the regretful son. Jesus tells a parable about a son who ponders the father's love only after he's spurned it. The grace he receives is beyond his hopes. That same grace is a crisis for an older brother who believes it is in his obedience that he has earned his place in the father's home. Please rise as you're able for the gospel reading. The Holy Gospel according to Luke. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to Jesus. And the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So Jesus told them this parable. There was a man who had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of the property that will belong to me. So the father divided his property between them. A few days later, the younger son gathered all he had and traveled to a distant country. And there he squandered his property in dissolute living. When he had spent everything, a severe famine took place throughout that country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country, who sent him to his fields to feed the pigs. He would gladly have filled himself with the pods that the pigs were eating, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired hands have bread enough and to spare, but here I am dying of hunger? I will get up and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me like one of your hired hands. So he set off and went to his father. But while he was still far off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. He ran and put his arms around him and kissed him. Then the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his slaves, Quickly, bring out a robe, the best one, and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. And get the fatted calf and kill it. And let us eat and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to celebrate. Now his elder son was in the field. And when he came and approached the house... He heard music and dancing. He called one of the slaves and asked what was going on. The slave replied, Your brother has come back, and your father has killed the fatted calf because he has got him back safe and sound. Then the elder brother became angry and refused to go in. His father came out and began to plead with him. But he answered his father, Listen, for all these years I have been working like a slave for you, and I have never disobeyed your command. Yet you have never given me even a young goat so that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours comes back, who has devoured your property with prostitutes, you killed the fatted calf for him. Then the father said to him, Son, you are always with me, and all that is mine is yours. But we had to celebrate and rejoice, because this brother of yours was dead and has come to life. He was lost and has been found. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. In the March issue of the Canada Lutheran, which came this week, 
A pastor in Montreal tells the story of how she received healing through Rembrandt's famous painting of the parable of the prodigal son. And that's the one that you see on the screen before you. Here's Pastor Mira Samalainen's story. I don't think you should go back to work anytime soon. The doctor's voice is gentle, but his words hit me like that famous ton of bricks. Burned out? Me? Sure, I hadn't slept in weeks and couldn't really focus on anything, but the doctor was clearly mistaken. As he tells me how we will make sure that I recover properly, I try to put together a counter-argument. Couldn't I just get more organized? There is no need for me not to go back to work. I love my job. But deep down, I knew the doctor was right. And still, all I could think slumped in that doctor's office was how I had failed my church family. I wouldn't be just taking some time off work. I would do so right before Christmas. And therefore, I had also failed God. I had deep feelings of shame and failure. But then one morning, I woke up to an image, Rembrandt's The Return of the Prodigal Son. Rembrandt's painting depicts the moment the son has come back. His clothes are dirty and torn, and he's probably feeling like the epitome of failure. But instead of scolding his son, the father is embracing him. He doesn't care about the fortune. All that he wanted was to hold his child again. The painting and the parable made me understand that my diagnosis was the best thing that ever happened to me. I couldn't offer God, or myself, or anyone, my accomplishments, or long days at work as token of my worth anymore. All I had to offer were my heart and soul, which despite being weary and exhausted, were all God ever wanted anyway. The minute I understood that was when my recovery started. I came to a soul-shaking understanding of how loved we are. Even if our clothes are torn, our hearts are weary, and we have nothing to give. The understanding of how, even if we can't see a way out, there is a way out with God. The hope is not just a feeling. It's a reality a truth that wants to take us all into its loving embrace and tell us all will be well. Today's Bible readings proclaim loudly and strongly God's providence, God's involvement in our lives. That the God who loves us unconditionally calls us into partnership. In Joshua, we learn that God continues to provide for the Israelites and for us even in times of change and pivoting. In 2 Corinthians, Paul proclaims that Jesus' purpose is to reconcile us to God, and that reconciled to God, we become ambassadors, God's ambassadors of reconciliation for others. And in the parable of the prodigal father and the regretful son, Jesus proclaims that God's love of us does not depend on anything we do or don't do. Even when we have nothing to offer our God, we are still deeply loved by God. And this is indeed good news. And the people said, Amen. The hymn of the day is Amazing Grace, How Sweet the Sound. It's number 779 in Evangelical Lutheran Worship and will be on the screen. Please rise as you're able.
drawn close to the heart of God. We offer these prayers for the church, the world, and all who are in need, saying, loving God, and responding, receive our prayer. Jesus formed the disciples in the ways of extravagant mercy and profound welcome. Lead your church to be a community marked by reconciliation, hospitality, and celebration. Send us to transform a world plagued by fear and condemnation. Loving God, receive our prayer. You make the land to produce a harvest that sustains your entire creation. Guide farmers making difficult decisions in the wake of increased fuel prices and supply shortages. Nourish the earth with ample rainfall and abundant sunshine. Send help to all impacted by tornadoes and severe storms, especially in Texas, Oklahoma, Louisiana, and Mississippi. Heal land tainted by pollution or misuse and move us to lessen the effects of the global climate crisis on the poor. Loving God, receive our prayer. Your people cry for help in times of distress. Resolve disagreements among family members. Save those experiencing financial hardship. Hear our prayers for those whom we name before you. Be with those who grieve the loss of Audrey. Console us with the promise that everything can become new. Loving God, receive our prayer. Countries are divided and leaders often harbor grudges. Reconcile nations that experience conflict. We pray especially for the meeting this week between Canadian Indigenous leaders and Pope Francis, that their time will be fruitful and will move closer to reconciliation. Act quickly to bring an end to war, especially in Ukraine. Make your care known for Kyiv, for Mariupol, and for all the places where violence rages. Anoint peacemakers trained in the art of diplomacy and foster a spirit of collaboration among rivals. Loving God, receive our prayer. The one who was dead is alive again. We give thanks for those who have died, especially Audrey confident that steadfast love surrounds them. Shelter them in your love until we are all gathered at your heavenly banquet. Loving God, receive our prayer. Accept the prayers we bring, O God, on behalf of a world in need, for the sake of Jesus Christ. Amen. And now we are bold to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. We share that peace. And a reminder not to leave your seats, just turn and bow to your neighbor. Receive the blessing. You are children of God, anointed with the oil of gladness and strengthened for the journey. Almighty God, motherly, majestic, and mighty, bless you this day and always. Amen. Our sending song is, O Christ, our light, O radiance true. It's number 675 and will be on the screen.
in peace. Jesus meets you on the way. Thanks be to God.